Good morning. Welcome to St. James Lutheran Church in Fayetteville, North Carolina. We are delighted that you have chosen to be with us by YouTube video and to worship with us this February 14th, Valentine's Day, as a matter of fact. In the church, we recognize it as Transfiguration Sunday. That Sunday in the church year between Epiphany and the beginning of Lent. Yes, this coming Wednesday is uh, Ash Wednesday. It's the beginning of our 40-day journey uh, of self-discipline, of self-penitence, of uh, our conversations with God to help us focus in very intently on faith formation, what it means to be baptized and called and named as a Christian, and leading up to the celebration of Easter the first weekend of April. Now, this year we are unable to be together on Ash Wednesday uh, in person, and so we have decided and are in the process of sending out a large number of kits, devotional kits. They'll come to you for the most part. Um, they'll be delivered to you. They'll come in a, a manila envelope, and inside that manila envelope will be several things that you will use for worship devotions throughout the time of Lent in 2021. For this particular Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, there are a couple of sheets with, a, with an Ash Wednesday devotional, with an actual liturgy for the imposition of ashes. There is a small packet of ashes, which you can use. There's also, uh, you'll also use that for the activity during the worship service. Now, along the way, during each Wednesday, there are additional devotional pieces uh, focusing on um, different uh, scripture text and the theme along the theme of uh, recognizing the heart, about transforming the heart, um, about how God comes to us in heart way, heartfelt manners and ways. And so we'll be thinking about that along the, our journey of Lent. There's also for uh, those who are creatively inclined, those who just like to color or draw, uh, those uh, among us who are childlike or are children, there are graphic drawings for each week that go along with that theme, and you'll be encouraged to uh, use those as well. Now, each Wednesday during uh, sometime early Wednesday morning this particular week, uh, we will have a uh, video that will be available on YouTube should be posted and available to, uh, for your viewing about 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning. And it'll be about 15 minutes that will help guide you through some of the thoughts for that day, uh, maybe some prayers or conversation pieces of that day, and maybe a piece of music that can be reflected upon as well. Those are still in development, and I'll be getting those posted each week. We do uh, pray for you regularly Hoping that you are being able to stay healthy, that you are being able to stay energized, that you are being able to continue to form in your faith, being able to see and recognize God in your midst. So this day we come before God in worship and praise, thanking God for wonders, for things that go on around and about us that are miraculous, that are life-giving, that are life-sustaining. Thanks again for being with us. And we are delighted that you have chosen to be with us in worship. We begin our worship this particular day as we offer our words of confession to God and we hear God's wondrous and gracious words of forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen. 
Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and for all we have left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. My friends, how vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. We live out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. The first reading for today is from 2 Kings, the second chapter beginning at verse 1. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, yes, I know, keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men, the company of prophets, also went and stood at the same distance from them as they were both standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me, what may I do for you before I'm taken away from you, Elisha said. Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted to you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them Elijah sent it in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Here ends the reading for today. The psalm for today is Psalm 50, verses 1 through 6. The Mighty One, God the Lord, has spoken, calling the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God shines forth in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence, with a consuming flame before and round about a raging storm. God calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of the people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, 
Those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. The heavens declare the rightness of God's cause. For it is God who is judge. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, beginning in the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And Jesus was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. This is an amazing, incredible story. The story of Jesus being transfigured before these three disciples in such a way that is not only unbelievable to them, that they were in such awe of it all, but that they were terrified. Terrified, meaning that they feared for their actual very lives, that they would not be able to leave that place alive. Terrified. Terrified by the presence of Jesus in such a way that there was no doubt he was different. Surely one of those disciples, either either at the moment or in the days following, began to ponder about the stories that they had heard in their youth. Stories they heard being taught in the synagogue. Stories about Moses and that fiery bush that never went out, that spoke to him, that caused him to take off his shoes because he was on sacred, holy ground. Or the story perhaps that we have read and heard already today of Elijah and Elisha. Elisha having been chosen to be the next person in line after Elijah leaves them. And then Elijah is saying, I have to go to a particular place. And Elisha says, I'm going with you. And Elijah says, I have to go to another place. You don't need to come. And Elisha says, yes, I do. I will be there. And this happens over and over until they get to the place where that fiery chariot and the horses of God come swooping in. And they take Elijah away, leaving Elisha in the aftermath of that awesome, phenomenal power. And perhaps Elijah himself was transfigured as as he was taken away in that fiery event. Surely, one of these disciples remembered those events. And as they saw these two figures, these perhaps they were apparitions, perhaps they were actual images they could make out the faces and hear the words, and they looked at it and said, this has to be Moses, and this has to be Elijah based upon what they're saying. Here is Jesus talking to the representative of the law and the prophets, the two major impactful areas of Scripture for the Hebrew people. And they didn't know what to do. They were afraid for their own very lives, and Peter speaks up with an idea that he can build something for them. Who knows why? (laughs) Peter had to fill the air with something, recognizing, recognizing that Jesus wasn't the same as he had been when he came up the mountain. His exterior was transfigured. He was different looking than he had been before. Now, there was the Old Testament 
understanding that anybody who looked upon the face of God would die. That there was no way that a human creature, that a human individual could see the powerful, pure, awesome presence and face of God and live to tell about it. It would just be too much and it would just melt you and kill you and take you away right then and there. One of the scripture stories tells us about Moses coming down off of the mountain after his period of time spending with God upon the mountain. The mountain clouded with smoke and haze and fog. And as he comes down out of the mountain with the Ten Commandments and regaining his entry with the people, they see a glow upon him that's like, unlike they'd ever seen on anybody before. He had been in the presence of God, the true, unadulterated, unfiltered presence of God. And even though he did not look on God's face, he still had the shining image of God's reflection upon him. I wonder if that's something that happened to the disciples when they re-entered the crowd once they went down off of the mountain. They had been to the mountain and witnessed God in a whole incredibly new, different way. And Jesus says, don't say anything. It is quite possible in my mind that once they got back in with the other nine disciples, they didn't have to say anything. Those disciples took one look at Peter, James, and John and said, what happened? You look so different. And Peter says, it, it's beyond words. I can't talk about it right now. And James and John do the same. And over the next period of time and over the time they're with Jesus and then after the resurrection, they began to realize and understand something different, that Jesus' transfiguration transformed them. Being in the presence of God is transforming. Now, some people might say that we see our young people go off to camp and they return or um, our men or women, they may go to some event like Tech or Via de Cristo or uh, One Life to Live or some other type of event. When they come back and return to us, they look a little different. They speak and they act a little different than they did before they left us. They have gone to a place, gathered with others, seeking God's face. When they return, you can tell something has happened. Some of our men have done that with one life to live. Some of our leaders over the years have done that with Via de Cristo. I've known some of our youth who've done that. Some of our leaders here at St. James have participated in tech, Teens Encounter Christ. We do that as well each week. Encounters, reconciliation, transformations of the heart. Our thinking for our Lenten theme this year is something that perhaps will bring us closer to the face of God. We seek out God. That's what we said last week. We need to hunt for Jesus. But we seek out God's presence, seek out God's face so that we may be transformed. I'm sorry, folks, this is probably as good as I get. The camera, the lighting, the sound systems, the filtering, all of that will not transfigure me enough to look like God, to look like a God, to be top ten on the must-see YouTube list. But I can tell you, that coming before God in prayer, talking about faith stories with other Christians, reading through Scripture, contemplating and meditating upon what God has, is, and will continue to do for us and with us and through us, allowing God to speak to us, to forgive us, to renew us, to encourage us and empower us, those 
discipling steps will transform us. Not just once, not just maybe twice, but every day. Continually being a slightly different person than we were the day before. Because we have been redeemed. We have been renewed from who we were before. We've been forgiven for what we did and did not do yesterday. And God empowers us to be better than we were before. The transfiguring, incredible story of this day leads to the incredible, restoring, renewing, transforming story of you and me and anybody else that we encounter. God's power to be transfigured in front of Peter, James, and John is the same power that transforms each of us and has the capability to transform every single person in whom we come in contact. Transforming lives. It's the power of the gospel. It is the promise of hope, of mercy, of grace, and unconditional love of God. Amen. I invite you now to join in the professing the words of the Apostles' Creed, the creed of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. And on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, who is made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, for the world, for all people in need. We pray, O oh God, for this church, this congregation. We pray for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. We pray for our neighbors here in Fayetteville and for churches around the world. We pray that we may be strong in our ministries of healing and wholeness as we offer ourselves to others through service, through giving, through inviting to worship. We pray for those, O oh God, who work tirelessly in hospitals, for those in the military, and for those who serve 
to proclaim messages of freedom and justice in the name of racial opportunity and racial equity. Let us pray for, these, for this, our church. Have mercy, O God. Let us pray for all who are wearied by life's burdens. May we pray for those who lack supportive relationships. May we pray for those who are facing economic struggles, who face crushing debts, who are unemployed, who are underemployed, who find themselves struggling with illnesses and recuperations from surgery, those who have been infected with COVID, or caring for those in their family who have been infected, for those who struggle with decisions about vaccinations. We pray for those who are exhausted from overwork and stress, or for in ed our educators and our medical personnel. Pray for those who are in key roles in our government to make decisions to help guide us through the remainder of time we have in this pandemic. And there are so many who cry out to you, O oh God. Our high school seniors and our college students, educators, firefighters, and emergency personnel, those who are alone in nursing homes and hospitals, for all those, O oh God, who need your strength and support, we offer our prayers. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For this congregation, O oh God, we pray that you would give us guidance and vision for bold ministry and young adult ministries to help reestablish and recreate and renew our ministry to youth and to children and to families. Help us in our social ministry outreach programs to Alms House and Operation Inasmuch, for Lutheran services in the Carolinas, for all those areas, O oh God, that we need to be active and following God's Spirit. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among you, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who by his example taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.